Bowl, the St. Louis Cardinals, but it's the first of four tonight from Great American Ballpark. Kirk Casale's in the driver's seat presented by Hyundai. Reds have won each of their last five games when number 12 is behind the dish. That is a 2.14 catcher's ERA. And the last year that he was in a Reds uniform, the difference in ERA was significant, and it looks like it's that trend is happening again here tonight. Now, he was behind the plate when Brandon Williamson dazzled in his major league debut in Colorado, mind you. Five and two-thirds innings, just two hits. One of those hits was a solo home run. Pitched very, very well with Casale behind the plate. So we asked Williamson after that start, what was the difference for you? Just attack. Um, throw everything with 100% conviction. You know, um, there's a couple times in there. Uh, it was there was cutters, and I was like, I'm not shaping this as a cutter. I'm throwing this as hard as I can. Um, and if he hits it, he hits it. My my whole job was to ex commit and execute the pitch, and that's all I thought about all night. And just leave it all out there. You know, uh, Lodolo texted me that right before I went out. I, I shot him a text, and he's just like, just leave it all, just leave it all out there. And he certainly did just that, and he did it in front of family and friends. And the Williamson clan is back here tonight. Mom has already got a scorecard. She is ready to score and rock and roll in his second big league start. It is the Red Legs. It is the Red Birds. It's the first of four. Up next, it is John Sadak and the Hall of Famer Barry Larkin with all the play-by-play -play action. Reds. Home debut as a Red, just his second start in the show. The 25-year-old part of our storylines presented by Elk and Elk came in from the Mariners in the Gino Suarez Jesse Winker deal, middle March 2022. Not only Williamson, but that brought the Reds' co-leader in homers, outright leader in RBIs, Jake Fraley, Justin Dunn, who is on the I.L. with a shoulder injury, and Connor Phillips, who two days ago, Lark, struck out 13 at double-A. Just another example of some of the trades that Nick Crawl pulled off. Hey, listen, they were unpopular at the time, but I think Reds fans now are starting to see the fruits of those trades start to come into fruition. So Williamson to the Great American Ballpark mound. Went into the sixth, allowed just a couple of hits in a tough place to pitch. An efficient 72 pitches mile high in Colorado. He really was dominant in that in his major league debut, and it was really nice to see him really go after the hitters. He mentioned that. Well, first of all, pitching in Colorado, your breaking ball is always a question because of the altitude, how it's going to affect your, your pitches. He was a power guy. He was really going after hitters. He said he was just ripping uh, that cutter and just getting after guys. He's got all four pitches. He's a tall guy. He leverages the ball downhill. Obviously, here playing against the Cardinals, the team is swinging some really hot sticks. Be interesting to see how he goes and attacks these hitters. He'll face a Cardinal club that is hot. The full nine is authored by Oliver Marmol. Cardinals began 10 to 24. They have won 11 to 14. Tommy Edmond leads off. Paul Goldschmidt in the two spot. Wilson Contreras clubbed against the Reds last year. 364, four bombs. Nolan Arenado is as hot as he's been as a Cardinal. Juan Yepes. Nolan Gorman, the best hit streak of his big league career. Paul DeYoung has been a major resurrection within all of baseball. Oscar Mercado and Andrew Kisner. Defense for the Red Legs, a bit of a unique look in the outfield. Stuart Fairchild's first start in left since May 9th. It's the third time in four games Jose Barrero has gotten the nod at center. Will Myers at right. On the infield, more familiar of late. Sinzel McLean left side, India Steer right side, and Kurt Casale, as he did in Williamson's debut, receives the tall left-hander. Fastball misses away as we are underway. Now the Reds could use a good start on many levels. Beyond the obvious it's one of the biggest keys to winning. But the Reds have lost four in a row six of seven. 
in their last six games their starters have an ERA just under seven. It's a 6.82 in a week long span. Yep. You know part of that is playing some pretty good teams that have been swinging the bats pretty well the Yankees. Love them or hate them. You got to respect what they were able to do. And Aaron Judge my goodness. What a series he had and even play the last game. Edmund coming off a big homestand hit 571 against the Brewers and Dodgers. Nice pick by Sinzel. Get a strong throw. Just a fluidity at third base from Nick Sinzel. You see the confidence. He set his feet, understand he's got plenty of time. Strong throw. Now this Cardinal team has been killing it offensively for two weeks. Their outlier is perhaps when he's going their best hitter. Paul Goldschmidt in his last six games is one for his last 18. Eight strikeouts does have nine walks in that time. And Lark that's scary when a team is that hot and a guy like Goldschmidt is that cold. That's right. High in the air to left Fairchild at first shaded his eyes. Tracks it. Now Williamson retires the top two. Now he battles a face familiar to the Reds over the years but in a new uni these days Wilson Contreras. Last year, 364, four homers against the Reds. He has 16 of his career homers at Cincinnati's expense. He has homered against the Reds more than any other big league opponent. Breaking ball misses up when Williamson was asked earlier this week what would he like to improve upon from that start against the Rockies he said command of the fastball and landing the breaking ball back our way just below our boot nice grab in the stands but as you mentioned Lark it's hard to land that breaking ball in Colorado. Sky to center spun around Barrero. Can he recover? He does. Not a pretty path, but an out nonetheless. Yeah, we call this the circuitous route. Gain your balance and make the play. Stewart Fairchild. Will Myers in right, Jose Barrero and Kurt Casale. They went all right handed against the lefty Jordan Montgomery. India right out the gate. That's misread in the sun by Yepes. Over his head and off the wall. India storms for second. That's his team leading 14th double on the game's opening pitch. I don't know if this was misread. I don't think he had actually had a chance to catch it. Jonathan India jumping all on that first pitch fastball. He has been amazing. Getting it started early in the in the game. Come out swinging. Wow. In scoring position Matt McLean. Still in. Jordan Montgomery, a six foot six left handed pitcher, 30 year old.
four pitches. You saw the fastball, a couple of them. One got hit for a double. Curveball. McLean to left. India green light rips around third. Yepes from left throws to second. McLean hustle. India scores. Tag on the sliding. McLean, he's safe. Dropped the ball, I think. Reds lead, one zip. And Matt McLean following suit right here and putting pressure on the defense. Good throw into second base. But you see Gorman right there trying to make the tag before he actually caught the ball. India's going to score easily. That left fielder have to go to his right. Strike one on Spencer Steer. Nine for his last 25, hitting 360 in his last six games. A third of his hits in that time have gone for extra bases. Back to back doubles out of the game. For strike three. See the numbers for Jordan Montgomery. Makes the hitters swing the bat. And coming out swinging, the boys have. Stevenson. Rips to right, that tails foul. Crashes off the padding. Now Tyler Stevenson on April the 28th was hitting 290. In 17 games since, it's a 177 average, 23 strikeouts, and 62 at bats. He did not start in two of the last four games. Clocks that to left field. Windmill is on for McLean. He jogs home and Stevenson connects. Two runs for the Reds early. Out a way to get back on the snide right there. The thing I liked about that at bat was a bullet down the right field line and then a pitch a little off speed. He pulls it to left field. Great sign, Stevie. Nick Senzel. Strike one. Now the Reds did not have a great series against the Yankees, and Senzel had one of his worst three game stretches of what's been a good year. He was 0 for 12, six strikeouts in the series. Now he has rocked lefties. He's been one of baseball's best in average and power against lefties. Stevenson takes off. Kisner finally finds it left side of the circle after Stevenson claims second. Kisner's lucky that ball didn't get through. You see, as a catcher, you want to get down there and make sure you block the ball and not try to catch it. Very easily, that ball could have ended up in the backstop. 
A wild pitch. Senzel strokes to short. Caught on the fly by Paul DeYoung. Stuart Fairchild among the other do Reds. In his last seven games, three for 18, a 167 average. He's shown some pop in that time, couple of doubles, four ribbies. Grounded to third, Arenado. Back to back doubles ignite. McLean and Stevenson drive in runs. May 7th, the Cardinals had the third worst record in baseball. Since then, a baseball best 11 and 3. And that goes lock in step with the offensive turnaround of Nolan Arenado. Yeah, this guy definitely one of the best in the game. Defensively, amazing things that he could do at third base. And he does such a good job of staying through the baseball. And I talk to hitters about hitting. I talk about Nolan Arenado and how he really kind of keeps his nose behind the baseball. He really gets into the fight. After play on May 7th, he was hitting 232. And he has six of his nine homers on the season during this 12 game hit streak. Chases the ball in the dirt, and Williamson strikes him out. The two pitches in a row, you can see right there the chase on the pitch before, and then another changeup, and another chase. Really good pitching. Back towards Yepes with a strike. You mentioned how tall Williamson is. He maintains his height when he throws the ball. He leverages the ball downhill. You saw the chases right there from Arenado on the changeups all the way down at the bottom of the zone. He's six foot six and he's throwing that ball from over top of his head. Working at the top and in the bottom of the zone. He's got great tilt. Hopefully he can keep it up. Time called by Yepes. And you can see right there that cutter. 0 for 5. Yepes to left, base in. I love what he said in pregame. He talked about his pitching. He said, I want to throw every single pitch with 100% conviction. That's a wonderful, wonderful thought. Left on left against Nolan Gorman. Strike one. Up until earlier this week, Gorman had been used in similar fashion to how the Reds used Jake Fraley. He largely sat against lefties. And his manager asked him, quote, in a joking way, if he's ready to grow up. He said, yes. So I gave him the first lefty. That was against the Dodgers. And here we are. He homered off the Dodger ace, Julio Rios. He homered off Victor Gonzalez. That broke a tie in the eighth inning. Now he's just three for 13 against lefties, so minimal chances. But those two homers have come in his last two games against lefties. Yeah.
I feel like there's a couple of guys in our system on this big league club that could be sitting in that same situation. I think T.J. Friedel has the ability to make things happen against righties and lefties. And I think there's an energy that he brings to the game, kind of matches India, matches up well with India. And the other, Jake Fraley, has been amazing this year in situations. I'd love to see what he could do if he get an opportunity to play every day. Williamson loses Gorman to the full count walk. And that brings up one of the bigger turnaround stories in baseball. Paul DeYoung two years ago, Lark, hit 197. He bottomed out last year hitting 157. He's over 280 and his seven homers as a shortstop, second most by shortstops in the league. And he drills the first pitch. Gone. Three straight Cardinals have reached. And DeYoung slingshot St. Louis in front, three to two. Well, DeYoung wasting no time whatsoever. Look at the location of that pitch. It's just a fastball center cut right out over the plate. Reggie Jackson said when it's up in the zone like that all you got to do is touch it. And the young did just that. Oscar Mercado. Full one. Cardinals just took three of four from the Dodgers scored 32 runs. In the four game series. They hit 452 with men in scoring position. And Mercado was a critical part of it yesterday when he drove in five runs. He's getting a shot thanks to injury of the five man IL. There are two critical position players missing. Goes opposite way, base hit. Both Dylan Carlson and Tyler O'Neill are on the IL. Carlson with an ankle could come back this series. And Mercado is taking plumb advantage of the chances. Derek Johnson goes out to chat with Williamson. Well, he retired the first four, but the last four have reached. Brief message now from Miami Valley Gaming. Me on down and get ready to get lucky at Miami Valley Gaming. Awesome. Let's see if Williamson can snap back into form here. He faces Andrew Kisner. Large lead for Mercado. Williamson misses low. Kisner starting at catcher for the 12th time in 17 games. He had a run of nine straight with Wilson Contreras. Was yanked from catching for a bit. They have gone back to alternating. He is one of the other few cold Cardinals, but still delivering power. Three for his last 17 in a six game span. Two of those three hits, home runs. Sally lost the ball. Mercado didn't realize. And jogs on the back.
Mercado in the big leagues 29 steals caught eight times. In the minor leagues where it's far easier to steal. 754 games played 243 stolen bases. Mm. Three one up and he walks him five straight Cardinals have reached back to the top of the order Tommy Edmond. Leading off for the first time in nine days. He grounded out to third his first time. Takes ball one. <laughs> Lifted to center. Barrero circles underneath. Tags at first and second. No, just a bluff. Strong throw in. And the speedy Mercado scampered on the back. Talked about a fluidity of Nick Senzel at third base. I feel the same for Jose Barrero in center field. Seems to, other than that fly ball over his head in the first inning. He seems to be very comfortable. Really gets himself in good position defensively out there playing center field. First pitch breaking ball for a strike. Paul Goldschmidt flying to left his first time. Chop to third. Sinzel sets his feet. Makes the throw. DeYoung goes deep. The Reds see St. Louis for tickets to an upcoming Reds game. Visit Reds.com. 3 2, Reds trail. Will Myers back to an open stance. Montgomery misses with a breaking ball. We've seen many different looks from Myers at the plate, particularly in the last month. And yet in the month of May, he's now at a buck 50, six for 40, 16 strikeouts. He is trying. He is. But that has been his kryptonite. You know, I, I, and yes, and, and what is that? That is kind of a reach. You know, I just think that. He needs to readjust his sights a little bit. I like the fact that he's open, but I would love to see him almost sit on top of the plate. I think he's got plenty of bat speed. I'd like him to sit on the plate if he if he would be comfortable in there. Obviously, Tony Perez told me one time I was asking him about making some adjustments and told him I was uncomfortable. He said, "You want to be comfortable?" I said, "Absolutely." He said, "Go home and sit on the on the couch." You're not getting paid to be comfortable. You're getting paid to hit. So what I would like to see from Will Myers is to get that back foot a little closer to the dish. I like the fact that he's open and compete from from that position. Because open or closed where the back foot resides is what's limiting him on those pitches away. I just feel like yeah I just feel like I feel first of all I feel like if he hits the ball well he's going to pull it down the left field line his bad head is just out in front a little bit. I don't think the cure for every right handed hitter is. 
to set up to drive the ball to right center field but I think it is a great foundation for for right handed hitters just because it puts you in position to do whatever it is that you particularly like to do and Jose Barrero struggles while the stance is different are very similar yes everybody Tyler Stevenson when he's struggling Jonathan Indy when he struggles it's it's just it just is what it is especially facing a left handed pitcher because everything is coming to you. See if I'm looking and I'm dissecting that swing right there if he hit that ball he's pulling it foul down the left field line. We want to be driving the ball to right center field the Toyota sign the West Lake tires the Kroger sign. That's the target. And then you pull the ball because you're out in front. But you're out in front with your bat head you're not out in front with your body and I feel like Will Myers is out in front with his body. And when Jose Barrero struggles I think he's out in front as well. Good looking pitch when Barrero's way he calls time. And generally lefties liberate right handed hitters that's not been the case for Barrero who has grossly reversed splits he has struggled terribly against lefties. And a miss low he is on. Well the first walk for Montgomery it brings up Kurt Casale. First pitch fouled back to the screen. The Sally at 150. He is one for 16 this month. When he makes contact, it's often loud. And he draws universal respect and esteem for the art of catching and game calling. Yeah, he does a really nice job behind the dish. He's kind of got that father like personality. He's definitely a leader veteran. It's very logical in his approach pragmatic. I think he's fantastic. During this at bat, and I feel like it happens more than just with the lefty, probably more pronounced with the lefty. Barrero takes a pretty good lead, not quite as large as Fraley, who's probably the most aggressive among Reds. But often that first move is right back to the bag. Here it's not. Casale rips it down the left field line. Foul. Second, Gorman, DeYoung, double play. After a rest day yesterday for T.J. Friedel that today would perhaps be the final test coming back from an oblique injury. He's eligible to come off the injured list today that obviously did not happen but he reported no ill effects from this workout full BP once again full workout with the players. So he could in a perfect world come off tomorrow but again it's an oblique injury. It will be very very careful but it has been noticeable guys him not in the lineup. 
He is such a spark plug. He's a talented hitter. I mean, he, he can hit. He hits in clutch spots. He has so many versatile dimensions to his game. He's also probably the Reds' best single defender when he is in center field, certainly in the outfield. Yeah, he brings a certain energy on the field. And I miss the mustache, but he certainly he certainly brings the energy in. I love the fact that the defense has to shorten up when he's up there no matter even with two strikes. You know you make the defense have to move and it automatically just kind of puts something in your mind that you've got to be aware of you have to it just puts pressure on the defense. I think Fried Fried does a lot of that for for this club. I'd love to see him an opportunity to play just about every day. Whenever he does come back. How would you best envision the lineup if McLean is right now in that number two spot behind India? How do you re-inject Friedel, particularly against a right-handed pitcher? No, I'm putting Friedel up there hitting number two. I think Friedel, I think Friedel does so much for this club. You know, I think it's a matchup thing. I think you could you go Friedel two or McLean two. But I see Matt McLean. I, I think that he's going to be more of a kind of a five, six hole hitter guy. He's going to be a, uh, you know, he can hit first or second as well. And those are going to be situations, those are going to be tough decisions, but great decisions because we have so many guys that are capable of hitting second in the lineup. Now historically you would usually try to alternate those lefties and righties and you know, against a right handed pitcher you would think Fraley figures in that upper third conversation as well so those are good problems to have yes they are more options Two, two. swing and a miss Williamson strikes out Contreras. Now Joey Votto also saw some pitching today. Yeah, it's another guy that we haven't really talked about, but if and when Joey comes back, it'd be really interesting to see what happens. Man, I hope he gets back, and I know he's working hard. I've had a chance to talk to him a few times, and he's trying to get back there. And you know, he's working hard, and I think the thing that's most impressive is. Although he's not playing, he's still down in the clubhouse. He's cheering on the boys. He's getting his work in and staying positive. I can't say enough nice things for Joey and hopefully he gets back and continue to do the things that he's done throughout his career. One and two on Arenado. Jim, what did you see from Joey today? He looked good, looked better. Afterwards, he met with the media and was asked, you know, about a timetable again. He said, I'm taking live batting practice. They asked him another question. He said, I'm taking live batting practice, which basically means I don't want to put a timetable on it. I am still day to day, but he did look better and was in good spirits. Grounded to third, Senzel. Two up, two down against the third and fourth position batters for Williamson. Now he retired the first four Cardinals of the game. The man who stands in now, Juan Yepes, started the barrage of five straight that reached in the three run second. Six of the last seven have seen a first pitch ball. That skips home to an own.
3 0. And a four pitch walk. Well, three walks against two strikeouts thus far for Williamson. His first walk was issued to the man he opposes now, Nolan Gorman. Who entered today top three in all of baseball in slugging and OPS. Accidental contact that goes foul. Now Gorman is top five in the game in RBIs. Only Pete Alonso is more in the National League. Fastball strike going to. One two again lays off appeal he did not go. Remember Williamson one of the elements that stood out thanks in part to the cutter and the Rockies aggression he was so efficient barely over 70 pitches to get into the sixth here's his 62nd pitch it's the third inning high in the air to right Myers shades on has it. As they're in Bud Light for all home games on Tuesday. Jonathan India saw one pitch lark and he hammered a double at 110 off the bat. You know, you're talking about guys in the in the lineup. I think Jonathan India has done an outstanding job. As the leadoff hitter.
Like, could you possibly see Jonathan India hitting down on the lineup, maybe hitting third, maybe third, fourth, or fifth? Because I think as he continues to get more and more confidence, I would love to see him hit it in more RBI situations. So maybe a move to put him, not necessarily that leadoff guy, which he's done a nice job of hitting leadoff. But you know, you're following the bottom half of the, or the bottom third of the lineup. You get this guy on base in front of him. You get TJ Friedel in, on base in front of him. Maybe Jonathan India becomes the middle of the lineup guy for you. Well, Matt McLean, two for two, his second multi hit game in his first week in the big leagues. That's just a good bit of hitting right there. It's like off speed pitch, and Matty McLean just showing a very mature approach to hitting. Good stuff. Montgomery misses. Back door to Steer, who struck out. Looking his first time. Uh oh. Steer to left. Yepes on the track. And that's gone. Spencer Steer claims the team lead outright. His sixth home run. And the two run shot has the Reds ahead once more. It looked like he snatched this ball right here when he hit it. it looked like he maybe have hit it on the end of the bat. But when it gets warm here in Cincinnati, the ball absolutely travels. You can see maybe a little out in front. But he maintained his position. Bad speed and a nice catch in the first row. It's a great head of hair, too. Look at that extension. That's what hits the ball, the ball ballpark. Bad speed because of extension. The power stash. Stevenson an RBI single his first time. Four pitch walk in the wake of the homer. And three consecutive Reds have reached. Senzel lined out to short his first time. Five of Montgomery's first nine starts were quality. Grounded sharply beyond the reach of Gorman at second. Stevenson threw second base. Edmund at right lobbed the second. First to third goes Stevenson. Hard single for Senzel. Really good hitting Nick Senzel. See how he stays through that baseball. And this is a rocket. This ball is hit on the ground. But no chance for Gorman, who's playing up the middle, to get to it in good at base running. Good recognition. By the big fella Tyler Stevenson going thir first to third, seeing that right fielder having to cut that ball off. Stuart Fairchild strike one. He is bounced to third. Now, while Montgomery's had that bevy of quality starts, he's also been rocked twice. Two outings ago in Chicago, six runs in five innings. Ten clean base runners allowed. Runner off from first, pitch tails down, throw down to second, head first plunge, Senzel swipes second base. And 
nice throw by Kisner, but Senzel getting in there easily. I think he's laughing because his feet look like they started to come over his head a little bit. A little scorpion slide. I was trying to get him to come out and get the gear from him. They never did. Now he put it in his back pocket. A little awkward running with that thing. See those hands, how those hands start to come up underneath his body. That is not a good feeling. And that happens when it's a little wet out there in front of second base. You hit that ground instead of sliding, you kind of stick. Well, as Montgomery prepared to deliver that last pitch to Fairchild, Arenado crept in fairly quickly at third. They're playing a staggered partially in infield. Arenado again toward the plate. Swing and miss. Homers have been an issue for Montgomery with six allowed in his last four. He only surrendered one in his first half dozen starts. Now that one came when he got drilled by the Diamondbacks. Seven runs, ten hits. That was in the middle of April. Will Myers worked a full count but struck out swinging his first time. On the ground to third, backhand Arenado. He may be the best. Spencer Steer with the ball looks like off the end of the bat, but enough to get it out of the ballpark. Two run bomb. Badcast 3D powered. By Google Cloud. That last pitch looked like it was basically in the same spot. It looks like he took a little bit off. You mentioned the bounce back season, John. It, it's it's demoralizing. You know, we don't know what's going on with Paul DeYoung. If there was an injury, if there was something hot possibly off the field that affected him, but it is certainly nice to see him. Bounce back and get back to what I think many fans have seen from him. Good solid shortstop with some pop. Swing and miss. Williamson wins the rematch. That's that changeup again. So Arenado chase. This time to Young. Back to her strike. Mercado base hit to right his first time. Calls time here. When he drove in five yesterday against the Dodgers, Lark, all five ribbies came with two outs. All five. Came against future Hall of Famer Clayton Kershaw. To right center, Myers the call. Two down. Kisner walked his first time. It's 
strike one. Over the hop of Steer splashes into right base hit. So now the third time through for Williamson. Against Colorado, he was yanked two batters into the third time through. He had a run of 14 straight retired, fell behind Profar 3 0, walked him, got lifted. Elias Diaz came in and doubled off Derek Long. But the bullpen was fairly dominant from then on. Reds won it. Three to one. For what it's worth, the top four hitters for the Cardinals so far tonight, oh for eight. Just low. McLean and Senzel chat as they pinch that five six hole in between short and third. Grounded to India. And it. RBIs. 14 walks. The walks have increased in a 443 on base percentage. And now playing shortstop every day since McLean is here. And they're not splitting time at short in AAA. A crazy home run. Uh, there is a Paul Bunyan esque legend feel to Ellie De La Cruz, and he hasn't played in the big leagues yet. Unbelievable. It really is. Oh, my goodness. And Noel V. Marte right behind him in double A. He's been on fire. I'm telling you, it's coming. 2-1 to Barrero, swing and a miss. And Dave Cruz spoke with Sam Dykstra of MLB.com, who covers the minor leagues brilliantly, through interpretation from the Reds' Jorge Merlos. And he said, really, it's all the breaking balls in the dirt. Ellie himself said, quote, now I've learned they're going to throw me those pitches. I'm not going to swing at them anymore. That sounds simplistic, and to some extent it is. But even beyond the walk rate going up, the strike rate, strikeout rate has come down markedly. Yeah. yeah. So he's making more contact, walking more, striking out less, and still doing crazy damage. Full count for a second straight plate appearance on Barrero.
pay off again. Another walk to Barrero. All right, boys, speaking of Noelve Marte, Southern League Player of the Week, second time this season, 10 for 25 this last week, three long ones, five RBIs, a cool 1344 OPS. And John, I know you've been tracking his batting statistics and how they've evolved this season. Right now, 292. He has been on it. Strike one on Kurt Casale. Marte entered April 25th hitting 186. He had one homer. He had struck out 17 times in 59 at bats at double A. In almost a month and 22 games since, 365 average, OPS over 1,100, seven homers against 12 strikeouts. In 85 at bats. And to me, what has to be underscored perhaps equally along with that productivity, he's 21. Yeah. The, the league averages, that's a 24 year old league, and he's killing it. He's killing it. Ellie De La Cruz is a young man. Mike McClain is 23. Matt McClain is 23, I believe it is. And that means the Reds are going to have some really good, really hard decisions to make. I think, you know, I, I would love to see Noel V because Noel V is a big, big body kit. I mean, big and boxy. He's a, a very large kind of Miguel Cabrera type of body I think he profiles out as a third baseman I would love to see him get an opportunity to go play in triple A with Ellie De La Cruz and just play third base remember we got Encarnacion Strand there as well he's playing a little third base low first base I mean why not I... this guy right here Put him in the middle of the lineup somewhere. Keep his bat in there and let him do damage. Bring them young kids up. Not necessarily to the big leagues, but get them closer. McLean is here. He's two for two. India has doubled and scored. It makes me think back to. Uh, a poster I had on my wall for a time as a kid that I think many did of, of that era that had three different sports cars on it and it said decisions, decisions, decisions. It was a Lambo, a Ferrari. That's what the Reds have right now and starting to trickle here and in the near offing. I think I think the biggest thing is is to allow these all these kids to play with each other on the same team and learn how to win because you know when you get to the big leagues you have to win it is all about winning here and eventually this organization is going to win but the question is like how can you expect players to know what it's like to win if they've never won before India to short next the glove of DeYoung trickles into left Barrero up to second two on that's a base hit. Jonathan India just continues to hit. I really, I, you know, I would really look, love to see him hitting with more guys on base in front of him. He has proven his ability to put the ball in play with some pace. Matt McLean, runners dance, the pitch. Slung in for a strike. There's still going to be many career firsts achieved by McLean. Likely in the very near future. Fouled away. He does not yet have 
a big league home run. He does not yet have a big league triple. He does not yet have a big league three hit game. What he does have is a high skill set and a very competitive yet level edge that seems built for big things in the big leagues. Great looking pitch called ball one. He also knows the strike zone incredibly well. And that's something I've heard from players that have spent time at AAA this year. Spending three days a week with the automated zone has them even a touch more confident and savvy. And one of McLean's innate physical attributes. Because he is such a compact player and he's shorter than most others, he has that tighter, finite zone. Defensive swing, duck and cover in the dugout. Jake Fraley was able to tap the ball alongside Ramos and settle it. Down. And who's one of the more vocal Reds as my eyes dart back to the dugout is clapping his hands most often. T.J. Friedel is right up by the padded rail. Engaged. It was very noticeable when Friedel first hit the engine list. It just quieted down. Because when you're in the lineup, you're more vocal. He's vocal now, but when he's playing, it's even more. And you described him as an energy guy. He is exactly that. And I wonder, Jim, you gave the uh, positive prognosis from his live ABs today. Could that return to be coming very soon? Ninth pitch of the at bat buried down. What a plate appearance for McLean. Yeah. Payoff. He awaits the 12th pitch of the at bat. He was down 0 2. And Montgomery's getting into a bit of a danger zone here. He is north of 30 pitches on the inning. Nobody stands in the Cardinal bullpen. Swing and miss. He lost that war. Man, what a battle, right? And okay, it's an over, so it's a strikeout. But it was multiple pitches. It was stress on that pitcher. He needs a break and a breather. So many positives from that at bat. 
You can just see the confidence building. And Matt McClain. And here's a pretty pivotal spot because Spencer Steer owns a two run homer that thrust the Reds back into the lead in the third. And the thought is okay you just had an epic battle with Matt McClain. Do not make a mistake and throw this guy a pitch out over the plate early because he has the ability to hit the ball at the ballpark. First pitch way up. Two and zero. Oh. Of his last 13 hits, seven have gone for extra bases. Montgomery has been more prone to damage in just his last handful of starts. And his energy meter has to be fairly low. This is a long inning. Runners go, double steal, pitch. Sent in the air to routine left center. Mercado secures it. Zach Brown Band will be a GABP, a special post game benefit concert, Friday, June 2nd. A portion of the proceeds from every ticket sold will go to Hop on a Cure Foundation to fight ALS. Get tickets now, reds.com slash Zach Brown Band. Reds up a run. We hit the fifth. Paul Goldschmidt 0 for 2 is fly to left bounce to third. Williamson Nick strike one. Uh -huh. 
Andre Pallante now stands in the Cardinal bullpen. Looks like he is starting to loosen. Swing and miss with a fastball. Goldschmidt wants timeout. We haven't seen a lot of the curveball today. But we have seen a wider array of his other pitches. Goldschmidt aboard. Brief message now from the Ohio Lottery. Excuse me. Oh, excuse me. Oh, I'm know so your sorry. limits, excuse both in life oh, and when oh, you gamble. I'm so sorry. Oh, 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 man, I'm so sorry. Get more tips like this at keepitfunohio.com. Pickoff throw gets by Steer. Goldschmidt pops up, sprints for second. He won. A little snap throw to first base. The problem is that throw takes Spencer Steer into the runner. So he can't just go after it as he would like to because he's got to give that runner a chance to get back to the dish avoid or to the plate to the base and avoid the collision. Buck Farmer now warms Williamson elevates to Contreras who is fly to center and struck out. Way outside. We've seen mostly cutter for Seamer and a good amount of slider change. The change is the pitch that has gotten whiffs today. Whistle to second. India eyeballed second. Throws on the first. He did not allow Goldschmidt to break, forced him to stay honest. He remains in second as Casale goes out to chat with Williamson. So this could work a little bit of time as Farmer loosens and the dangerous and red hot Arenado ready to hit. And here comes David Bell. Now Williamson had tamed Arnado 0 for 2 against him strikeout ground down. He will not see him a third time. The move has been made to Farmer the skyline chili call to the bullpen. Buck Farmer has been really good for this team this entire season. His last 14 appearances has a 159 ERA. Has not allowed an inherited runner to score. See if he can keep that streak going. A handle one on Arenado.
just clips the top tier of the zone. Arenado, the top run producer in baseball in May, entered riding a 12 game hit streak. And he goes down on three pitches. Farmer strikes him out. Good changeup right there. Some good depth. Previous pitch throwing up in the zone, and then the off speed breaking ball down and away. And a pinch hitter. That's why Kirk Casale has walked out to speak with Buck Farmer. They have yanked the right handed Juan Yepes in favor of the left handed bat of Lars Newtbarn. Also an outfielder, so that minimizes defensive impact, and he has been excellent with met in scoring position. Farmer's command is on point. He has just edged the zone. Does not get the chase there. Goldschmidt green light. Myers in right plays it oddly. Newbar shuts it down in second. He snaps an 0 for 11 slide and he ties the game at four. Not a bad pitch right here. This ball is up and in. Most lefties don't like the ball elevated and in. But Newtbar. All over that fastball. Keeping it fair down the right field line. Good bit of hitting. Well, the first inherited runner to cross on Farmer. That closes out Williamson's line. Gorman, indecisive check swing, nicks a foul. And Williamson, four and a third, four hits, four runs, four walks, three strikeouts. Two. Senzel. Cardinals chase Williamson and Newt Bar off the bench ties the game. The Toyota hit and win sign during tonight's game. John Polly from Williamstown, Kentucky, will win the brand new built in the USA 2023 Tundra on display here at Great American Ballpark. Register for your chance to win at your Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky Toyota dealers. Lars Newtbar stays in the game. He's now in center. Mercado replaces the pinch hit for Juan Yepes, bumping from center to left. New pitcher is Andre Palonte. So that 96 mile an hour heater throws a curveball and a slider. It's got a lot of spin, big curveball. They both started and relieved last year, had 50 plus innings both out of the bullpen and in the rotation. John he throws what makes him so difficult to hit against is he's kind of straight over the top but he throws that fastball at 96 and then he's got that overhand curveball haven't seen it yet it sits about 76 miles an hour
Stevenson fouls it away. He has an RBI single and a walk. Now the Reds saw Palante six times last year, two starts. He was 3 0 with a 1 5 9. But walks were a problem. And he walks Stevenson. Now remember that Stevenson was aggressive on hard contact from Nick Senzel right side. Stevenson went first to third. Senzel after his single stole second. Both men were stranded. Strikeout, ground out, ended the inning. Laced foul. So Jordan Montgomery went four, four runs, seven hits, walked three, struck out four. Tagged with a homer by Steer. 88 pitches, 57 strikes. Bounce sharply and in the center, base hit. Newt Bar on the charge, scoop. Stevenson shuts it down at second. Sinzel has hit the ball hard three times tonight. Good swing, Nick Senzel staying right back up the middle. Oliver Marmol called Newt Bar off the bench. He tied the game. David Bell summons Jake Fraley off the bench with a go ahead run in scoring position. Second best OPS among pinch hitters the last two years in baseball. He is the Reds outright leader at RBIs. He's been surpassed from the tie for the team lead at homers by Steer. Ball one. Thirteen for his last twenty with men in scoring position. Thirteen for his last twenty. Fouled that off himself. Broke his bat. Fair ball to first. Runners off. Underhand to the pitcher covering. Acts like a bunt. Stevenson to third. Sinzel up to second. Will Myers is struck out. He is grounded out to third. Hit the ball hard, but Arenado barely broke a sweat. Infield creeps in. Arenado, the most shallow. Chopper, runners break. On the charge, backhand, bobble, throw to first. In time, Stevenson scores. Senzel over to third. The Reds take a 5 4 lead. But there is a second out. Got to put that ball in play and try to avoid the pitcher. And Will Myers able to do exactly that. Gorman, no play at the plate. With Tyler Stevenson running on contact. Close at first. Good hustle. Now the Reds back in the lead. Jose Barrero has walked twice. That is an over the top <laughs> downward play yeah. pitch. Oh. 
at the knees 0 and 2. When might he invoke that breaking ball. There it is. Barrero yep. lays off. You see that 20 mile an hour difference, 97 mile an hour fastball. That breaking ball. Though it wasn't a good one, 77 miles an hour. That's significant. That's what makes David Bednar so good with yep. the Pirates. Breaking ball, swing of the miss, strike three. Reds reclaim the lead. The ground out by Myers. Giving and sacrificing to country. 2-1 to DeYoung, swing and a miss. Jake Fraley pinch hit. He stays in the game at left field. Straight switch for Fairchild. Reds have double barrel, both Sims and Young. Righty lefty work behind Farmer. Swing and miss. Talked about Buck Farmer and his ability to throw that ball right on the periphery. When you can do that, you get a chase. When you go a couple more inches out, Buck Farmer's been on fire. Faces Mercado, who is single to right, fly to right. He gave up the RBI double to tie the game to Newt Bar, who, by the way, has been one of the most clutch guys in baseball this year. On what was not a bad pitch. This has been a great outing for Farmer. And Mark, with Derek Law injured, it feels like you know, Farmer, who's had a solid season to this point, is probably the most poised to step into that type of role. Yeah, I would agree with that. The Cardinal production has overwhelmingly come from batters five through nine thus far. And I guess that could be a glass half full optimist pessimist test. Is that a good or bad thing? Top four hitters are far more established, potent, and largely hot. Full count. To right field, Myers. Brief message now from Academy Sports and Outdoors. Hey, Cincinnati fans. Get all you need for spring for less at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Kisner has walked and singled. Strike one. Time for the batter Kisner.
Sims throws by his lonesome now in the Reds pen. There's silence in St. Louis's pen. Tall target. Up of the wing. Full count. The welcome breeze flows into our booth. Coming off the Ohio, flags have flown lightly plateward. Slap to right. In the seats. Farmer closing in on 30 pitches. Sims is hot, only occasionally throwing. More often watching from the Reds' bullpen. Struck him out. Let's update the FanDuel same game parlay discussed on Reds Live. Brandon Williamson got three strikeouts. Nolan Gorman does not yet have a hit. Spencer Steer, two ribbies on one swing with his home run. Kirk Sally leads off, first pitch. Full one. He's bounced into a double play. Foul pop to the catcher. This game has a unique feel, Lark. It seesawed some early. Feels like we've been in this almost uh, volcanic dormant state. And waiting for a possible eruption on either side that would firmly grab stranglehold of the game. It's normally how it happens. Reds at two in the first Cardinals a three shot on a DeYoung homer in the second steers homer slingshot of the Reds back ahead. That came in the third. With two strikes the outfield takes a collective series of steps to its left. Strike three. Good slider right here. And Palante has some good stuff. Seeing that high 90s fastball, 96, 97, that slider right there. And the 77 mile an hour curveball. He's throwing a couple of those. Jonathan India, two for three. Hard double off the wall to the left. Single that nicked the glove of DeYoung at short.
Swing and miss on the curveball. There it is. A lollipop curveball. Good pitch. Matt McLean saw 13 pitches when he rallied from down 0 2, eventually struck out of the fourth. It's the most pitches any Red has seen in a plate appearance in the last couple of years. The last Red to force the opposing pitcher to labor that much? The former Cardinals slash Red, Max Schrock. Chop to second. Reds in order for the first time today. This seventh inning is presented by Energizer. Top of the order due up for the Cardinals. Lucas Sims is in out of the pen. Yeah, Lucas Sims in Colorado struggled. He pitched a third of an inning, gave up four runs. But bounced back nicely in that Yankee series. Edmund skies it. Barrero. One out. Now often in this spot a seventh inning in theory hopefully the second to last time you'd face this top of the Cardinal order. We would see in Jabot here a lot. And Jabot had a rough series against the Yankees. Rizzo got him a couple of times on a fastball and a breaking ball. So here here's a chance for Sims. In a very difficult pretty high leverage spot. And I think that Derek Law injury. Has really kind of caused David Bell to try to go with some different people here and there and trust. Trust is the biggest thing. You know, these guys obviously have to get it done. But give David Bell a reason to trust you, put you in situations, be the bridge guy. Yeah, it's funny you use that word. That's the the central word that if you read the clips for the Cardinals as they've turned around their year and they've been winning for two weeks from both manager Oliver Marmol and his players trust a walk to Goldschmidt second time he's been aboard on a free pass you hear that about Gorman getting chances against lefties about the young turning around his career with how he's rebounded this season the entire offense probably fronted most significantly by Arenado going from below mediocre to elite big swing and miss strike one for Sims against Contreras. What did that mean for you as a player that sense of trust both given and accepted that the two way street. Well you know every every player has to have confidence in themselves. That's really the most important thing and then once you show that you're confident and you come up in situations regardless if you're successful or not. You know, what a manager is looking for is someone to give them a professional at bat trying to give me an honest effort. Meaning the 
the situation is not too big for you. You can go out there and sometimes you don't win. Sometimes you get beat but you don't go out and lose meaning you don't go out and go out and make mental mistakes. Physical mistakes are going to happen. And so that trust comes from showing your manager that you can handle the situation. You're going to give a professional bat. You're not going to make the mental mistakes. You're going to anticipate. You're going to work to get yourself in position to be successful. And once you show that the onus is on the player to show that to the manager. You have to earn the manager's trust. You earn your teammates respect by going out there and getting it done. And yes you're going to fail getting it done doesn't mean always be successful in the task at hand. It's a, the process of how do you go about it. Double play depth. Two two down. Now David Bell thinking ahead once again has Alex Young up. On deck is Arenado. They're after would be the left handed Newt Bar, the left handed Gorman. So the window all the more finite for Sims. Struck him out. Aggressive fastball. Start to start guessing against Lucas Sims looking for that slider. He does possess that 94 95 mile an hour fastball. Now Arenado and I would assume Sims last man. Get him in the inning. And enter the stretch with the lead lose him. And I have to think Young would get the call with Newt Bar on deck. Appeal. Yes. Nice glove there by Casale, too. You know, Sims works on the extreme third base side of the rubber. That's slider away to a righty. Yep. Arenado was all kinds of fired up after that appeal call. Had a few words, first base umpire as well as the home plate umpire. The Reds were yapping to get a timeout called. He stepped out, but did not officially call timeout. Tap back to Sims. Works around the walk. Tames the top four. First 47 team games of the year since Joey Votto in 2008. He's also a, the only Red ever to have his first home run of the big leagues called by Joey Votto. <laughs> he was on the play by play when he went to center field. Jordan Hicks is in and misses up. Yeah, here it comes. Flamethrower right here. See that 98 fastball didn't quite get it there. 101 he sits. There's a slider and a changeup as well. A lot of strikeouts, a lot of walks. Steers one for three. Strikeout and a flyout. Bookend is Homer. 41 percent of his career pitches triple digits. Now, while we went away, Nolan Arenado had to be held back by his first base coach, Stubby Clapp. He was going at Will Little on that check swing call. Arenado had an animated ejection after a check swing disagreement against the Cubs late August of last year.
Cop it in. Payoff fouled away. <laughs> fouled into the glove, strength three. Jordan Hicks with the high fastball. You talked about the 41 percentage of his pitches at 100 miles an hour. That's as a reliever. Young Hunter Green with that high velocity as well as a starter. That's special, special stuff. Fastball away to Stevenson aboard three times tonight. RBI single, two walks, run scored. He scored the game's most recent run to put the Reds ahead by this margin on Myers ground out in the fifth. One oh two just below the knees. Those are some tough takes. But living up to the scouting report, balls to strikes, literally 50 50. Bounced right back to him. Shovel to first, Stevenson out. Nick Senzel has had three good at bats a line drive out, hard single to right, hard single up the middle. Grounded to short. And by DHL Supply Chain. Now hiring a wide range of salaried managerial and operational roles. Apply today. Join DHL. Com. A comfortable evening. GABP Reds ahead by one. Alex Young is in. Alex Young has been pitching well as well out of the bullpen. Look at his numbers on the season. Very stingy with the walks. I love that ratio. 24 punch outs, three walks. He has not allowed a run in his last five appearances. And the last one got to Sally, who needs a moment.
Now Young is in to face the left handed Newt Bar, the lefty Gorman on deck. But Young so far has reverse splits, just about an even number of at bats. Lefties are hitting 268, righties 211. The OPS 723 against lefties, 579 against righties. Strike three call. Good pitch right here. That breaking ball. Saw so Newt Bart really turn on that fastball up and in earlier. Good place for it. Chris Stratton warms in the Cardinal pen. Young misses low to Gorman, who has walked and scored. He's 0 for 2. Feathered at the knees, 1 at 1. Sharply sent fair inside of first. Myers gathers on the roll in the corner, standing double for Gorman. That time the breaking ball is on the inside part of the plate. I talked about lefties liking the ball down and in. And Gorman, who's been on fire, able to keep it down the right field line. The Reds now have Alexis Diaz warming. Man at second, one out in the eighth. DeYoung, a three run homer, since then a couple of strikeouts. Back to her strike. Bounced foul. Our FanDuel Live total runs update. Pre game over under was at 10. Has it moved much? Now at 10 and a half. Mercado on deck. I would think there is a strong chance that Diaz could get the call. Mercado is much better against lefties than righties. But also remember that Oliver Marmol has Brendan Donovan and Alec Burleson left handed bats on his bench. India creeps second. Young comes home. A lot of change ups this at bat. Oh. 
De Young has seen one fastball so far. That's the second curve his way. Timeout employed. Ninth pitch of the plate appearance. To right center. Meyer sprinting. Won't get there. All the way to the wall. Gorman around third. Throw in cut by India. Gorman scores. DeYoung ties the game at five. Now you mentioned a lot of changeups. DeYoung not giving up on this ball out over the plate. And this is what you do with an off speed pitch from a left hander. That's just good hitting. Now, Giovanni Gallegos has joined Stratton in the Cardinal pen. David Bell emerges from the dugout. Young has faced his minimum necessary of three. With a potential go ahead run in scoring position, Young is done, and Alexis Diaz, it appears, will get the call. Has been locked down 10 for 10 in the save opportunities, but this is a huge part of this game. Get out of this inning, give the boys a chance to score a run and go back out there and lock it down and get the win. And as assumed, Marmol goes to his bench. Alec Burleson pinch hits. He has a pair of bunt hits on his year. Lines a very foul first pitch strike. Appeal, he did not go. Burleson, like the Red Spencer Steer, did have time in the big leagues last year. But only 16 games, 48 at bat, still qualifies as a rookie. He's top 10 among rookies in homers, doubles on the year. Check swing seemed to go that time. Yes, appeal confirms. One and two. Tight slider down and in. Now the other lefty off the bench with a potential go ahead run in scoring position. Diaz will oppose Brendan Donovan. One. Now this means that Marmol will have emptied his bench. The only remaining man is Trace Barrera, who will almost assuredly come on to catch. They won't lose the DH. That is socked to right. Myers has it read and makes the catch. Diaz stops the bleeding. The Cardinals deadlock the day.
Multiple changes. Oliver Marmol has indeed exhausted his bench. His Cardinals have tied the game at five. Let's see if the Reds can respond. Brendan Donovan remains in the game as the left fielder. Off the bench is Trace Barrera to serve as the catcher. So he'll hit in the eighth position. And as the Reds, Jake Fraley comes to the plate for his second at bat, he opposes Giovanni Gallegos. Three pitch pitcher. Actually, it's the fastball slider that he he throws. He's been good out of the bullpen. 16 punch outs, only three walks. Fraley lifts to left. Donovan darts in to Young out. Donovan tracks it down. So that's eight straight cleanly retired. And Will Myers was set down in the fifth. But a big asterisk. He drove in what at the time was a go ahead run. Ball one. Gallegos, one of the notoriously slowest workers in a Major League Baseball, and a guy you would think would be affected by the pitch clock more than most as a consequence. Those guys don't exist anymore, do they? Yeah, the rule, unfortunately or fortunately, depending upon perspective. Fortunately. I would agree with you. Yes. Those that have had their pace forced to quicken probably disagree. There's give and take to everything in the world. But most of us win with the pitch clock. <laughs> Down to the way. Just low. Down again, and Myers walks. Brief word now from Kia. Kia Sportage X Pro. Jose Barrero yanked back. David Bell calls upon Will Benson. He had a big chance late yesterday with the bases loaded. The Reds' offense was heavily stymied by the Yankees in the finale to complete the sweep. Triple A, the contact up, the walks way up on base near 470. Fouled opposite way. Benson very quick hitting for Barrero got to think that he would wind up likely at center field Runner off, great jump, swing and miss, strike three, throw down to the bounce, Meyer steals second. Two outs, man in scoring position. A 
Will Myers gets a great jump at first base. You can see that throw on the third base side. Kirk Casale started to stride toward the circle, but got yanked back. Kevin Newman gets the call off the bench. And that means the Reds will have done the same and exhausted their bench. Because Luke Bailey will almost assuredly be on the catch next inning. Gallegos had a horrendous outing for a blown save against the Angels. His first outing of May. Got tagged with a couple of homers, four hits, gave up three runs in just one inning. He has mostly righted the ship since. After poor showings and back to back outings against California clubs, Dodgers and Angels. You can see on the Valley Bar, Newman has seen Gallegos. Two for six against him with a double. Outfield is very shallow. Newt Barr is the best arm among the Cardinal outfielders. That gets by. Myers breaks. And he can jog into third base. Wild pitch. That's the issue with catching with one knee on the ground. I think it just limits your mobility. That ball gets by Barrera. Probably should have blocked that ball. Newman strikes out. Ryan Helsley warms in the Cardinal bullpen. Three and oh. Four pitch walk to a talented base dealer.
Goldschmidt 0 for 2, a couple of walks, has scored a run. Big lead for Edmund. After five straight balls, Casali, excuse me, Maley out to chat with Diaz. Edmund had 30 steals two years ago, caught just five times. He had 32 steals last year, caught just three times. He is six for seven to begin this year. Nasty slider. But that's the give and take, right? The slider looks to be Diaz's best pitch today. It's an easier pitch to run on and could be more wild. Delayed call of strike. Pitch missed away, throw down, safe. India says check it. He wants the Reds to challenge. He believes they got him. And they want a challenge. Wow. Close. Cincinnati is challenging the safe call at second base. That's an amazing job to drag that toe of the left cleat. But does the tag get him on the back before the foot hits the bag? You know, John, a lot of times we see base runners running to second base and Instead of extending their legs and touching the bag as quickly as possible, I think we saw it from Jake Fraley the other day against the Yankees. Guys going to second base and they don't extend when they slide. I think Edmund, if he extends his leg and he keeps it kind of stiff, if you will, he arrives easily before the tag, but because he bends that knee, That's a nice job by India. You want to catch that ball as close as you can to that runner. You just want to drop that glove on the runner. He does a nice job. A call on the tag. Call on the field safe. Is there undisputable video evidence that the tag was applied first? I mean, that is. Really close. Yes, it is. Here's the call. After review, the call on the field stands. The runner is safe. Cincinnati will lose their talent. Take a look at this side by side, synced up time wise. Yeah, they didn't say it was confirmed. Said it stands, so not enough evidence to overturn it. But also can't confirm that he was safe. So now the speedy Edmund in scoring position. 2 2. Swing and a miss. Alexis Diaz throwing that ball on the outside part of the plate. Seems to be that's what he feels feels comfortable with today. See if he stays out there with Contreras. 
Fastball up. That's four straight hitters that have seen a first pitch ball from Diaz. Evoking shades of the tightrope walk when he went nearly two into Miami on 40 pitches. He has thrown more balls than strikes thus far tonight. And yet, to your point, Lark, he has faced many of the game's bigger names and stars as he continues to ink his own resume. He had the slider, backdoor, and Juan Soto in San Diego. He had that outstanding showing against Jose Ramirez that came last year. The back to back efforts to grind in Miami and secure a series win. Nice job by Maley. Diaz has been a dominant strikeout man during his meteoric rise. Appeal, no go. Second walk of the inning. Derek Johnson. Was hit into eight ground ball double plays just outside of the fifth most in baseball. Line foul. Nice pitch by Alexa Diaz, maybe his best slider. Lars Newtbar, RBI double, strikeout looking.
Newpark came off the bench, faced Buck Farmer, and on a strong pitch, still doubled inside of first to drive it a run. Silvino Bracho throws in the Reds pen. Landed. Strike two. Edmund and Contreras go, ball down and in, bases loaded. The high wire act reaches its pinnacle. Nowhere to put Gorman. Who has doubled, stretching his career high hitting streak to 12 in a row? Right at him. has alternated walks and strikeouts since the advent of the inning. Edmund fakes. Struck him out! Helsley, another fireballer out of this pen. He sits at 100 miles an hour as well. He's got the slider and the curveball that he throws up there. He was four for four and saved tries against the Reds last year, tossing eight shutout innings in the process. Strike one on India, who's two for four. Helsley has topped out this year at 103.1. That came 10 days ago. <laughs> 101 away. And that outing 10 days ago in Boston against the Red Sox, he threw 28 pitches. 19 were at a hundo plus. J. 
Just off the plate away. Should the Reds fail to walk it off for a third time this year. Ian Jabot now warms in the bullpen. Struck him out. Just rares back, and here it is. Good location of that pitch as well. Matt McLean, two for four, RBI double. He scored a couple of times. Tagged with a couple of runs two days ago. That came in one inning against the Dodgers. He had faced three men to begin the ninth. Two came home. Gallegos cleaned up his mess. Cardinals held on to win 6-5. Come out. Spencer Steer, a two run homer. He's one for four. One one. Both teams have exhausted their benches. Each team has already heavily worked its bullpen, including its outright best options. Who will blink first tonight? Extras tied at five. It's been really good out of bullpen, although the last two times out, Anthony Rizzo greeted him with a two run home run. First one was a fastball, second a slider down the right field line. Bounce back. Get this team inside in the dugout. Get yourself a win right here. Paul DeYoung, a three run homer, an RBI double. He's two for four. Nolan Gorman is the free runner at second base, and he's not particularly quick. He's bottom half 
of baseball in sprint speed. No doubles at third with Senzel. No two struck him out. Good lo location of the heat. 96 mile an hour tough to catch up to that ball up at the top of the zone. Now the first plate appearance for Trace Barrera. First pitch, left center. Benson crisscrosses and makes the catch in front of Craven. Well, strikeouts have certainly piled up. These teams have now combined for 26 strikeouts, 13 on each side. Andrew Kisner among the strikeout victims. He has singled, walked. He's one for three. Oh, excuse me, Brendan Donovan has flied to right. Chabot, the sixth Reds pitcher used so far. Cardinals have gone five deep. Way up. And last check, no activity in the Cardinal pen. Helsley's gone two innings once this year. Last year, he went two or more seven times. Three oh, and a four pitch walk. Top of the order, Tommy Edmond, his sixth plate appearance. Chabot's third appearance in four days. Pumps the strike. Two. 
timeout called by Edmund. Gorman goes, swing and a miss, struck him out. Against Helsley Lifetime. Two and oh. Three and oh. The dirt gets away. Steer takes off. Stevenson walks. Steer to third with nobody out. Trace Barrera behind the dish. That ball gets a little loose from him, but not far. But Spencer Steer, very aggressive with the secondary lead. Great read. The ball in the dirt. Grab a 90. Infield in. Goldschmidt remains near the bag. Outfield comes incredibly shallow. It has to. I'm not sure why you bother trying to hold Stevenson there. That liberates some space for Senzel. Now Goldschmidt comes in. Check swing. That's a strike. All at one. This situation, you're just looking for something out over the plate. Just square it up. Don't try to guide it. Don't try to hit a fly ball. Just make good solid contact right here. Oh boy. As a hitter, you have to understand all the pressures on the pitcher and all the pressures on the defense. One one. Poke to right. That's going to do it. Edmund the catch. Doesn't matter. Steer tag. Sprint home. Sack fly RBI. The Reds have their third walk off win of the year. They take it in 10. Six to five. Nick Senzel coming up yet again with another hit. I'm sorry the sack fly but two hits on the day he's been swinging the bat exceptionally well. It's nice to see him be healthy and be able to come up in big situations like this as I said. You're just trying to make good solid contact. Helsley provides a lot of power. So all you got to do is square it up. He does just that Spencer steer easily scores from third base. And a nice bounce back win after facing the New York Yankees. Red snap a four game slide and 
they humble the red hot Cardinals. So with the opener 